Major support provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Valley Strong Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. Minter Field Air Museum, and I am with Ronald Pierce. How are yes. you doing today? I'm doing fine. And uh, can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Uh, I was born in 1937, so Minter Field means something to me because it was active when I was here, and my dad worked out here, and as a youngster, I came out with him and actually seen the airplanes and hear them and be out here during the war. So when did you actually start working here yourself? I started with the museum about 10, 15 years ago. And what is your position here? I'm chairman of the board of Minterfield Air Museum. And what does that entail? That entails a headache of being sure that everything is done right. And can you give us a little history of the Minterfield? Minterfield was actually started prior to uh, the war. It was started in the late 30s, early 40s. They were starting building. They actually had cadets graduating in 1941 so out of flight school. Were they building airplanes here or were they being trained to fly? They, this was the largest basic training base west of the Mississippi. They graduated over 11,000 cadets to go fly and give their all. Was that in the course of one year or was that a course over a couple of years? From 1941 till the end of the war, 1945. And right now where we're standing is, is the entrance to the museum. Can you kind of point some things out? Yeah, this, this building is actually one of the few real existing uh, buildings that, that were here during the war. This is actually the uh, firehouse that was here during the war. Uh, we've got documents of different things of when they dedicated the field. The original field was called Lerdo Field because Lerdo Highway. And they decided that they wanted to name it after somebody important in the area. And they named it after Hugh Minter, a graduate of Bakersfield High that actually was killed in a mid-air collision at March Air Force Base in 1932. Oh, wow. So that's how it got its name. And if you look at any of the airplanes that were here during the war, they will have an L on them, which stands for Lerdo. So let's go ahead because there's so much information here, but there's also another room. Yes, there is. And this is really amazing to see all of the uniforms. Over here, we have uh, dedicated to the WASPs which are women's air service pilots. So what was their role? Their role was to take the airplanes from the manufacturer to the base and also take airplanes from one base to another, come in and help the, the students. They were not actually uh, U.S. Army Air Corps. They were civilians that were given the right to support us in World War II. When you say they were taking the airplanes, were they actually flying the they airplanes? They were actually flying them from one place to the other. Uh, as far as I know, uh, some of them were killed. Uh, we have one that I know of that is still missing, and she took off at uh, uh, what is uh, LAX now mm -hmm. in a P-51 and ne never made it to her destination. They figure she's in the bay. back again at the Minterfield Air Museum and now I am with Alan Anderson 
Yes. How are you doing? Can you give everybody a quick rundown of exactly your position here and who you are? I'm the financial officer. I'm the bean counter. <laughs> and how long have you been here working here? Oh, 15 years, 10, 10, I don't know, a while. Since I retired and the wife decided she, I had to find something to do. So, you know, it was like, let's go out to the museum and see what the museum's about. And can you tell us the room we're in right now? Uh, this is what we call the North Room. Um, it's had a big history, but the biggest thing we have here is our link trainer. Now, looking at it, it's like, ooh, kids are going to come and go like, it's a ride. Can I ride it? it, it and that's how it, it turned out originally because Link made it and then the Army didn't want to buy it. They ended up putting it in, in entertainment places. The Army finally realized they were killing too many pilots. So they got a hold of Link and they started using these. And so they would do, they had rooms full of buildings full of these. So a, a normal cadet would spend probably 10 to 15 hours in a link trainer as part of their training while they were here. So this is an actual trainer for pilots on how to fly. Yes, and it's, and it's for flying at night when you don't have anything except the radio and a beacon to fly on. So it's not like you look down and see the city or the highway you're supposed to be flying on. Do you know the year that this was built? About 1942. 1942 this was built? Yeah. So th when they were using that here when they were training pilots? Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, because I have done some um, training at North High School in their department there, but it's all new technology. <laughs> and you sit in a chair and you look at a screen, but this is like a real life little airplane. And I notice not only this, the airplane, but we have something over here at the desk as well. How is this connected to the airplane? The desk, the desk is what the instructor uses to make sure that the pilot is going where he's supposed to. So he has his own set of gauges over here so he can see elevation and what direction he's going. This mouse um, has a wheel on it that was an ink wheel, and it would actually move around a piece of paper and fly down the path. If your pilot was online, he would end up with his ink mark would be on what they had told him to go. So these are like the ink marks, correct? The this, path this, that they were yeah, this following? Is, this, is, this is a radio beacon. This, is, this would be one letter or two letters going and coming and um, as you would listen to the to the uh, Morse code it would get stronger on one side or stronger on the other side if you got off to the center. So you had to make sure that you had equal, equal um, sound on, on both, both sides, sides to know that you are on the on this path. Some of the pilots would fly a little bit less on one side and they would fly down towards the edge of it just because it sort of seemed easier to have the difference instead of being even. It looks easy, and so it is to the overconfident. But one instrument, the automator, escapes his eye. He forgets that he is losing height too fast. What are those in the drawer right okay. there? So the, this is the Morse code generator. So it's, it's making the dots and... and sending the code. It's sending the code. Over here, you can, you can mess with the, the pilot because you can add rush noise. You can add all kinds of crazy stuff. You didn't want to make this guy mad because, because he had the controls to be able to take it to where it's really weak. It wouldn't be a strong signal at all. Over here on this side, he could actually add wind direction and speed of wind to try to blow you off course. The beacon's on, a beacon's solid, but if the wind's blowing, it's gonna constantly try to push you away. Let's look a little bit more at the actual little flight. So what does it run on? Let's, let's get around here to the front. Okay. Oh, it turns. That is a vacuum operated motor. Oh my goodness! So this is all vacuum operated? All, all on three inches of vacuum. 
So if you look at, or there's a valve right here that slides back and forth. So when it's open like this, the valve is closed and the vacuum is trying to close that. So as it turns, each one of those, each one of those little valves pull it a little bit and it all adds up to moving this thing from one side to the other. So when the pilots were in this, this was actually movable as you fly. And it would go around. Yep. Wow. Does it even go, because it, it, it goes around, does it go up and down as well? Does it go vertical? Once I get you in it, yes it will. <laughs> <laughs> now what mathematics would they need, would the pilots need for this, and also whoever is the trainer at the desk? Well, you're gonna have, um, you're gonna have um, the math of how fast you're flying, what your direction is, where you're going, and where you need to turn. So you're gonna to have to mathematically figure out your whole route from going from one airport to another, uh, let's say from here to Paso Robles. And you're gonna you're gonna fly, let's say, two or three different beacons. So you're gonna start out on one beacon and you're gonna go so far, and then you're gonna pick up another beacon. And you have to know where that intersection is so you can change your radio to pick up that other beacon so you can turn and fly and then pick up the other one to go on into, let's say, um, into Now, a when we talk beacon, and for students, they are thinking also mileage. Are beacons a certain amount of mileage? Does it depend They could on be that? any place. They could, you could have a beacon that was 10 miles away from another beacon, or you could have a beacon that was 100 miles away. So, so you would actually, like a jigsaw puzzle, you would figure out which which path you're going to take to get from point A to point B. Now, where are those beacons being transmitted from? Uh, the ground stations. Okay. And and they're spread throughout. We don't use them very much anymore because of GPS. But in the old days, it, that's that's how you flew at night. So you had to know where those beacons were. You, you, yes, you had your maps, and then so you figured out on your map, and you knew that you were flying at a certain speed. So in that speed you knew that you were going to spend 20 minutes before you were going to turn. So at 19 minutes, you're going to start figuring out what the, where your other beacon is, so you can pick that up and turn and then fly up that beacon. So students really need to, well, pilots needed to use that distance equal to eight times time formula. And speed and all the rest of the crazy stuff, yeah. And then if the wind's blowing, it's going to try to blow you off course, so your ground speed might not be the same as your air speed. a little different spot right now. I am actually in the um, airplane that the pilots trained in. And so, Alan, where do we get started now? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, we ran out of fuel and we had to refuel since, since the last segment. Um, normally, this would be closed up. There's another door here that goes here. The hood would come down. So all you can see is your instruments. And that's to train them with the night vision, that they won't see anything. They won't. And they just have to hear. And they have to hear and listen to the, the guy at the desk. So I'm going to start, let's start by having you push the rudder on the other side. Yeah, push that one forward. Okay. All the way. Oh, okay. Now, what I remember from, um, going to North High is that we steer with our feet, correct? So I'm pushing the right side, causing this to go to the right side. If I, and I don't want to hit anybody, but if I push with the left, oh, I turned a little bit. Will I go towards it's, the left? This is where I got my little bit of a leap. Oh, gotcha. I, it, it will go to the right a whole lot easier okay. than, it, than it does. And then what does this do here? Well, we'll get to that. Do, okay. Go, go. Do you want me to go all the way around? And that's what the motor is driving it from that. So go okay. ahead, push all the way down. There, up. Oh, I'm pushing. There we go. Woo! 
It is kind of like a ride. Vacuum leaks are really a problem. So uh, I'll give it just a little bit of a help here. Okay. Um, oh, there it goes. It's starting to go a little faster. And you know, I have to put some power on this. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna get you back around here. Now, the other day when I was flying it, I was having a hard time with this airbag and I don't know if it's got a leak. I mean, that's a constant deal. You do the airbags, you get them fixed, and they, they're aged. Yeah, you know, and they're, just like they're... a car, it's constant service. <laughs> so we're gonna first go up and down. Okay. So. Um, are, and these, what are these to hold on? No. Okay. No, those are lights. Oh, okay. Your stick. Now what does this do? Does that bring me back over? Okay. So, so that. So the throttle so, moves you left and left right and right. that way. Now, up and down. Okay. We'll push your stick forward. Oh. So I'm going for a dive there, and then I want to pull up to speed up top. Well, you're actually going to slow down. Oh. Because because now you're trying to get the airplane to go up. Okay. So so yes yeah, so you you're. Uh... So I can do that. Can I turn it? Is that okay? Balance out. And your horizon there says. I'm level. Is that my you're level? level or not? Okay, so I am level. So I'm going to go to the right. Now could I? Do the throttle a little bit this way. Will it take me? Are you going to go all the way around or are you going to turn back? Nope, I'm going to go. Can I come back around? There we go. Oh. Yeah. All right. And even these go up and down. <laughs> all right. Oh, OK. I think I need to level out. This was so much fun and so amazing. Now, obviously, when people come to the, um, let me you level out. You gotta keep on it. It will, it will, if you don't keep on it, it Yeah, it will. It, I noticed it's doing its, its own thing. So when people come, they obviously cannot get onto this, correct? Right. It's for a show for them to see. Well, this has been absolutely amazing. Ron, come on over here too. Thank you, gentlemen, for leading us around. There's so much more to see, so much more to do. Please, please, please know that you are open correct from Fridays and Saturdays only, 10 to 2. And they are in need of volunteers. So if you are interested, please check out the website. And gentlemen, thank you. I need to come back out because there's so much more to see and do. I thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. We well, enjoy having you out. And that's it. I'm going to fly away in a minute from Mentors Field.